Hello, and welcome back to Science with Sully. Today, we're going to talk about the mechanism of the polio virus. Um, the polio virus, it exists in a class of viruses known as pocornaviruses. Um, some other viruses that exist uh, as pocornaviruses are the common cold is one of them. Um, and there are a bunch of others as well. But today I wanted to focus on polio virus because um, it's a virus that one day could perhaps in the near future and a lot of our lifetimes be uh, wiped out uh, like smallpox. So I wanted to go over uh, polio virus and some of the, and the mechanism it uses to um, wreak havoc in the uh, spinal cord. Uh, and give uh, help someone who wants to better understand it. So some things about the uh, polio virus. It is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus, which means it, um, its RNA looks just like ours. It is in the three to five prime direction. Furthermore, um, this means that when this RNA enters our cell, it can be translated, uh, translated straight to a protein. It looks, it masks mRNA. So that, as you can see, is kind of a scary thing if it could just come right in and uh, if it's uh, translated straight to a protein, that also means that uh, usually it's going to um, hijack um, uh, you, uh, your polymerase and other machinery that it uses to make proteins for itself. Um, the pathology that's associated with poliovirus is called uh, poliomyelitis. And poliomyelitis, if you break down the word, polio actually means gray. And myelitis actually is derived from a Greek word merus, and that means marrow. So it's given that name because of its propensity to uh, attack the gray matter of the spinal cord. So you can see that um, that's also a big concern of, um, of polio, advanced poliomyelitis. Um, it's got uh, abrupt onset and it's got some of the regular <clears throat> viral side effects, but um, one that really sticks out that I just would note is um, neck stiffness. That's kind of an outlier. Um, that's kind of a deciding um, symptom uh, if you're trying to diagnose, if somebody was trying to figure out uh, if they had polio or were infected with polio. Um, and it, it, you, polio comes from um, usually drinking contaminated water. Um, so polio uh, is, they call it, it's a coronavirus and it's polio because it uh, replicates in the um, motor neurons of the spinal cord. So you can see that that's actually very devastating. You'll see in a second uh, when I show the mechanism because um, when it replicates in the motor neuron, it uh, creates a ton of more viruses and the neuron is not spared by the virus. The virus actually kills the neuron um, when exiting. So let's get into the mechanism of, um, of <clears throat> the polio virus. And um, yeah, here we go. So first I'm gonna draw our uh, eukaryotic cell, our cell. Um, so it's gonna look something like that. And um, 
You'll see why I'm erasing there in a minute. Um, so first, uh, the cell, or the virus, I'm sorry. Um, it's an icosahedral cell, so it's gonna look a little something like that. Uh, first, and it's got its little genetic material in there, it's RNA. It's going to uh, attach to the cell, uh, to our cell with a, um, with onto a receptor called CD15. So our first step is um, attachment. And that's via CD15. So it attaches. And then once it attaches, it's brought in by the cell and pinched off into a vesicle. So a vesicle and in that vesicle, um, the, um, the pH drops and that uncoats the virus to where now it is open to the cellular environment. So that's our viral shell being open and the genetic material kind of spills out. So we call that, um, so two is uncoat and release genome. So this would be one, this would be two. So the genome is released. Well, I said earlier that it is um, positive uh, single sense single-stranded RNA, so it can be translated um, straight into virion proteins. So three would be translation. And it does just that. Um, our little um, ribosomes will um, take that and translate proteins. So there are our ribosomes and our viral RNA and our new proteins coming out, our viral proteins. Um, some of these proteins will be structural, so uh, structural. And um, some of these proteins will be uh, called replicases and we'll call these our replicases. And those are viral proteins that we translated with our ribosomes. So that right there is our ribosome. And it's our ribosome. He hijacked it. So the replicases are over here and um, the, they will start um, transcribing the genome of the virus again. So um, the, it's what they're going to do are is create a bunch more of these guys. So let's see. So they're going to just make a bunch of these. And these are the same as the ones that started right there. So you can see what's kind of happening here. And they're going to, um, so that, and then our structural proteins down here, we can't forget about those guys. We call those VSPs and we'll color them like so. They are going to meet up with, oops. they are going to meet up with the genome that was just transcribed by the replicases. And lo and behold, our structural proteins, well actually let's do them blue like they, uh, are designated our structural proteins and then our new genome but it's that times about a thousand 
um, at least. And so that's uh, a new virus. And that virus comes down. And it does not spare our precious neuron. This, by the way, this whole cell is a motor neuron. This, they don't come back. And um, they control movement, muscle, involuntary muscles too. And um, those, that includes um, your diaphragm, which when your diaphragm no longer works, um, you have respiratory depression. And that is usually the cause of death with polio myelitis victims. So this virus going back to the mechanism basically rips open the cell membrane of the neuron because it is a bilayer. Um, let's correct that. Gotta have it as a bilayer. And it rips that open and it, um, it, it lyses the cell and our new virion is right there and it, it busts out and there's another motor neuron over there and it goes and does it again until there are no more. Um, and this part, this will be, so we have our step one or step two, we've got right here, step three, uh, step four, put it all together. And that is the, pro after translation of our um, structural proteins are replicases that are going to make our genome for our new virus. And then five is um, cell lysis. And that is this step there. So as you can see, um, this virus is devastating um, to the nervous system. And um, as I discussed, uh, respiratory depression is uh, due to diaphragm dysfunction is usually um, the cause of death. But the good thing is that polio is on the decline and we do have a chance to, um, to rid the world of it. So um, I hope this one raised awareness, but two, if there are students that are in a virology class and just needed a fresh look at the mechanism of polio uh, and really a lot of other coronaviruses. So the common cold would do um, this, but, uh, would do this kind of same mechanism, right? But instead of a motor neuron, it would be in a lung cell. So it's not quite as devastating because our lung cells could kind of turn over. Um, motor neurons, uh, they don't turn over, they don't replicate, they don't go through mitosis. So once they're gone, they're gone. Um, so if you uh, like this video, be sure to give it a like, uh, a share, um, if you want to follow, give me a follow. And if you would like to subscribe for more content that will be coming, um, please do. And I hope you enjoyed Science with Sully.